Hello everyone, I'm Sue Bastone, I'm Chair of the School Library Association and uh, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, my top five tips for advocacy. Um, I was 25 years a school librarian, and, but before that I was in marketing and advertising, so I sort of feel that I uh, have combined both of those things quite well. Uh, and I feel passionately about the importance of advocacy. So here we go. Tip one. If you can plan regular events that you can shout about, and I don't mean great big things that take lots and lots of time, just things that maybe uh, are small, maybe weekly or monthly. Um, but if you've got something that you can tell people about, that is really the most important thing. They might be your weekly book group. You don't necessarily have to do it yourself. You can get the pupils to use social media. You might have some dear time, drop everything and read. But although a lot of schools don't like that quite so much in big ways, you can do it in small ways. You can do it in the library. You can do it in the classroom. You can do it in a corridor. You can just have small groups and a bit of storytelling. And those little moments are things you can tell people about celebrate poetry have an annual competition or just have a poetry slam that sort of thing um, and ensure that you do these things regularly the best way of actually letting you're making yourself do something is to publish a literary calendar and I always used to find if you've got something every month small or large it's something you can tell people about how you tell them of course well, there's so many ways you can do that. You can go to assemblies, you can hand out awards, you can obviously use social media, uh, but I will come on to more, more, more ways you can do that. The most important thing is you've got to do things to tell people about them. Tip two, send out regular bulletins. You've got to let people know you're there. So if you can, a daily email to staff. Something like uh, a quote of the day or a great resource. Um, in my school, I used to have the day email newspaper in, and that was great. The staff loved it. You can actually email that out and highlight to them the, the best bits or something that's particularly relevant for that day. Because if they get something in their inbox from you every day, well, they know who you are. A weekly or a monthly staff update with new resources and new items of interest, they haven't got time to find out and often won't think of asking you. So you've got to tell them. Um, a library newsletter sounds a bit old hat, but actually these days, of course, it doesn't have to be a printed thing, although people quite like that sometimes, to sit and read something over a cup of tea. But obviously in, in this strange world we live in at the moment, you might not even be seeing them. So get something out to them. You don't have to write that yourself. Get your pupil librarians to do it. Great experience for them. And they will see things from the pupil point of view. The most important thing is two-way communication. So asking staff and students what, why they can't do without their school library is important. And actually then strike up those conversations. Tip three. Really following on, communicate, communicate, communicate with everybody. So parents, you now you can be obviously emailing parents, you can be offering book advice, book lists. Parents are desperate for help with their students and their pupils, uh, with their kids, to actually encourage everything, studying, researching, reading, the lot. So if there's a school newsletter, contribute to it. Uh, if there's any other way you can get to parents, do it. Staff, obviously, that's, that's an absolute key. Offer lesson support, curriculum book lists, study skill sessions, whatever. I'm not suggesting do them all. Pick the one that you know you can do and actually will be relevant to your staff. You might want to work with different departments. You know, you can work with the art department to shadow the green away, that sort of thing. So actually just building those links with the staff. Leadership. At least termly update your line manager. That's really important. Tell them what you've achieved and also tell them what support you need to be able to do your job because you can contribute to whole school development and they need to know that. 
And last but not least, of course, with your governors or, or those trustees, uh, an annual report we've talked about in other scenarios, but actually that's really important. Keep a record of what you do and tell them every year. Tip four, make contact with your local media. Now, nowadays people might say, well, obviously you've got a whole wide world out there on social media, so it's maybe not quite so important. But it's still probably worth getting in touch, and again, this could be via Twitter or whatever, with your local newspapers, because they're always desperate for nice stories, and everybody loves a reading story. And kids and reading, you can't lose. So actually, your local newspaper, your local radio station, anything that you think they might be interested in, you know, get in touch with them. You may have a press department in your school, in which case, obviously, you need to go through them. But if not, you know, get contact to the Age Direct and just send in photos and offer to write a, a few words. Makes a big difference. Tip five is really the obvious one, uh, which I've talked about all the way through, which is use social media. Obviously, we all do and we all know what reach it can have. But sometimes in your busy days, in the library, it is really, really difficult to make time to just tweet that simple display or something nice that happened, a conversation with a student. And those little things actually speak volumes. They're the things that we often don't find time to do. I know myself, I'm a great retweeter, thinking of actually things to do yourself and to promote yourself and your service are actually really good. So set yourself a target of so many tweets a week or, or whatever you think is appropriate. Most of all, I think, get the students and the pupil librarians involved because they use all sorts of platforms that certainly I didn't and you may not. So get everybody on board to help you make the most of those media. So there's my top five tips. I could say a lot more, but obviously I want to keep it short. Hopefully, I've given you a few things to think about. And the best message, as I say, is just make sure you tell everyone the fantastic work you're doing. Thanks for listening.